and good morning and welcome to Locked In Stitches. Let me just make sure everything's going to come up here correctly. Okay, you can see we are live there. Now, get ready guys, I'm going to scare the crap out of you all. Because... Don't worry. Do not adjust your screens. Unfortunately, this is my face this week. I've got pink eye. Um, if there's anything around there, I'm picking it up. And I'm, I'm liking the sound of pink eye better than conjunctivitis for some reason. Um, pink eyes are from cows. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, no, I've got conjunctivitis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, haven't been near any livestock whatsoever. Um <laughs> My immune system's just so low, my body's giving up. <laughs> and quite honestly, I'm over December now. But at least my jaw is starting to feel better. Um, by Sunday, I was able to eat the first piece of solid food without um, screaming in pain. Um, and I've stopped taking um, oxycodone now. Um, oh my goodness, that's very strong for pain. Um, oh, look, it was it was just terrible. <laughs> Um, Joanne Seaton, go and have a lovely day at work. Watch us on Catch Up. Michelle Reynolds, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we are live today and we are going to work on the final of our Rock the Caspars um, blocks. What I want to show you is what mine looks like so far. Now you can see I've got some putting together here to do. Um, but you'll see I only have space for one large block and one small block. Yay, it's nearly there. And what I love about taking the photo, um, oh yes, and good morning, of course we've got Louise with us as well. Um, so Michelle says, good morning Louise, good morning Linny, morning, thank you for Michelle. joining us. Now that I can talk, I will give you a call Linny, I promise. Um, so what I like about having the photo here is that I can look at it and see what's standing out in a bad way. For instance, I don't like these two blocks together. So I'll swap one of these around with one of these three before I put everything together. Um, but what we are going to do first of all is get our design ready to go. And I had a request yesterday from somebody, or last week, from someone wanting to see how I got a design um, wirelessly from my Genomi software onto the machine. So I've got my machine turned on and just in the um, main embroidery edit screen. And I've got my Horizon Link software here. The block is on that software and all you then need to do is choose to send. And look, I used to go click, 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 click because I couldn't see it doing anything. But already, oops, you can see that that design is there and ready to go. And what I love is that that brings it up into the correct hoop as well. Now, what else have we got here? Ah, Kathy Davies. Thank you, darling. Oh, look, I'm so grateful to Michelle for being able to teach her class last week. Not only because um, I think it's a great class and it was a really cool project. And, oops, where? So this is what I made with Michelle's project um, and I'm so I'm so happy with how that came out um, the only thing that I did even slightly differently um, was I put a little tuck in my pin cushion so that I could have a little bit of loft in it um, but I'm thinking that that is just gorgeous I didn't show you that one Louise you can yeah. have a look at that um, and what I've got here is my hoop ready to go. 
I've got my cutaway stabiliser and I've got the T-pins all around which are going to stop the stabiliser from any movement. So let's come through. And of course the other reason that I laid all my blocks out was because now that I'm getting towards the end, I need to make sure that colour wise I've got enough differences in the, um, in the entire quilt and everything's not limited to a single colour. So doing that really does allow that to make a difference. Okay, I need to turn my lights off what happens when you don't record for a week and I've got water soluble um, thread in my needle. Now I went through and cut all of my pieces. If I hadn't I would have laid this just simply on top but because this is going to perfectly fit into the space I'm going to leave this as the outline. Now we can make one of those for Carl's remotes. <laughs> I solved the problem. I'm the remote Nazi in my house. Oh really? Oh yeah. I'm I'm the TV Nazi. Edward can have the TV when I get to bed. <laughs> oh wow. I I don't even actually know how to use it. If I stuff the TV up, I have to have Cameron or Edward fix it. But yeah, I'm I'm the Nazi who chooses what what I want what I'm watching. Oh, oh dear. I I actually don't know how to use the remote really well. But I'm the one that has to fix it when he stuffs it. <laughs> well see because I have the I have the um not the brain of how the computer works, mm. but I'm the one who fixes it. Yeah. Edward's job during university was installing hi fi stuff. Oh. So he gets really pedantic and wants a universal remote. Oh. So if he's having a universal remote, then I am doing um, like. You know, so it's only one remote for all, you know, for the TV, the hi-fi, the this, the that, the... Oh. Um, but, um, so he programs it, and then, yeah, honey, you broke the television. Oh. <laughs> Fix it. It's much better now that I've got Cameron as well. And good morning, Rhonda. Thank you for joining us. Oh, well, when we went, we went to Sydney on the weekend to see our grandson, and apparently Carl um, reprogrammed the remote no. without, without even knowing, and now the remote talks to the television. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, and I bought a um, elf on the shelf for my little grandson. Oh, yeah. And... Now they have to move Elf on the shelf every day, so now they're complaining. <laughs> they're complaining that Grandma, Granny, um, bought Elf on the shelf and it has to be moved. So <laughs> yes, they're not happy with Granny either. I thought, oh well. See, Elf on the shelf was. That was after my kids were little, yes. so we never, you never had, never had to do that one. Um, I am liking the fact that I don't have to spend the entire month listening to High Five, um, singing Christmas songs. Um, that's pretty cool. And my um, my builder, who's a um, who's a friend as well, um, well I'm friends with his wife. Nice chap. Isn't he gorgeous? Yeah, very nice. Um, and um, he's got a very young daughter, so I did up um, her. I did up my leftover Santa sack panel oh, okay. for their little girl. Um, he's been here in the last couple of weeks, and he's about to finish up this week Ed's office, so I can ditch his ass out of the um, lounge room. Out of the lounge room. And then. So that's your job for this week, isn't it? 
Um, my job. <laughs> Might be his job. Or is it a George job? No, he can ditch his ass. He can move his stuff. We've, we've, it's making the decision to get rid of some stuff. Like we've got a beautiful table um, that started off as my desk back in Melbourne. Then it became his desk when we moved here. Yes. Um, and like he put the top on it. We got it. We got it from a second hand place. And it's not that it's expensive. It's just that we love it. And we've now got no use for it. So it's making that decision to, to get rid of it. It's it's one of those tough ones. So would it be your dining room table? No, it's an office desk. Oh. Um so if and anyone won't be in the newspaper. Oh god no, it's massive. Oh. Um, it's a big old fashioned executive desk. Oh, and they're so nice, okay. Um So what kind of stitching are you doing green around the edge? So I'm doing green, so this is colour on colour to start with in the heart. So you're really getting the lusciousness of the um, of the green. And then I'm going to look at what comes around it then. Oh, you're going to put that tiger in the middle. <laughs> I'll show you the tiger in a second if you're good. I was actually thinking your granddaughter would like the tiger. Um, oh, I didn't bring my So, I made, I made towels this week for my granddaughter. Lovely. And I was very good. I went into my... Um, design and didn't do the usual um, lettering. I decided to step out of the box and put a different lettering. Okay. Oh, Rhonda, I totally agree. The, the single remote is kind of good. It means we only have to yell that we've lost one of them. Um, <laughs> who took the bloody remote? <laughs> um, and yeah, Michelle, I know, I know about getting rid of stuff. Thankfully, cleaning out Ed's mother's place and my parents' place is really helping us yeah. um, make those tough decisions. Uh, Rhonda, I'm not sure why you keep on losing us, darling. I'm, I've got a reasonable sort of link here. So I don't know if it could even be the service of where you are. Is anybody else going in and out as well? So I'm trying to decide what colours I'm going to use. I'm almost thinking of yellow, orange and then pink. I just want to have a look at how much yellow I've got in the final. I think that's probably not a bad use of colour. Oh, Michelle, I don't know how you're going to fit four more people um, in, into your house like your... I've got seven extra over Christmas. Oh, Michelle's having her son, daughter-in-law and their two children moving for like six, four months. Oh, dear. I'll take your hat off to you, darling. Uh, you've got a big house. <laughs> Oh, and you're doing four of these. I might even get that um, that first spool of um, green of green finished. <laughs> I really have enjoyed this book, though, ladies. Um, thank you so much for coming on the journey with me to do it. 
Well, I've enjoyed learning how to do applique. <laughs> I can't oh. believe in 20 years I've never done applique. And applique is one of the great ones to do embroidery with because it yeah. just makes it so much quicker. Well, it's not that much. It's not the quickness. It's being able to use fabrics. Yes. And it means it's another way to personalise it. It really yeah. is another way. Yeah. Okay, Ruth Ridley's saying she keeps on losing me as well. Because uh, I'm doing a persistent stream, okay? I'm not sure what's happening then, darling. That's terrifying. joining us on Facebook, welcome. I can see we've got a couple in there. Um, so, what, a couple of other things that I wanted to show you that I've been working on. So I'm starting to get next year's stuff sorted. And you may have noticed, ah, oh, oh, bugger, you didn't tell me guys, I'm out of thread. Now, absolutely I could have changed that and I could have um, put in a bobbin before it ran out, but I am incredibly stingy when it comes to my bobbins and I hate having half used bobbins around. Oh, so do I. <clears throat> The other day I went through four bobbins. Well, doing lace. Mm. Um, and I, I ended up getting the... Um, oh, I need to get a new oil off here. I don't use a lot of... Um, I don't use... Because um, I use pre wounds I don't use a lot of bobbins that I wind myself. And I just, I'm not a huge fan, after using three wings, of, I find that the machine just doesn't get it stock solid. No. So, but the bobbin winder, have a look at the bobbin up by the 580, 550. Feel how tight that is. This one here? Yeah. Feel how tightly wound that sucker is. Yeah, that's really tightly wound. Because I used a bobbin winder. Your bobbin winder? Yeah. So I'm going to, I recorded a video, I'll edit it this week. Because my bobbin winder doesn't wind in that tight. It should. Maybe I need to change your bobbin winder. Because yours is the one for the brother, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you change the tension on it? Yes. You oh. need to bring it down. Because that's, that was the problem. Remember I always had a problem with the tension yes. on my sewing sewing machine? Um, so what I've been doing is... This is gorgeous, girls. Um, I have been making lace and loving that my join covered perfectly. Making lace, attaching it to my fabric, and this is going to be my shirt extender. And by shirt extender, what I mean... <clears throat> is... So, this 
this is my interest. Um, and it is the fake shirt extender. So all it is, is this woman's got a t-shirt and chopped it off and put a waistband on it. Um, and it, for me, it's just covering up your bum. You can see there's a lace one. You want to dress things up. Um, so I am making my own shirt extender. And I thought that would be a great project for us. So I've been doing my lace and I've I've really been playing on It's like an outside petticoat. Yeah. I still got petticoats from 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day I put a new elastic in one of them. Because <laughs> the petticoat was still good. But the elastic had had disintegrated, so I thought I'd I'll have it for the winter time. I think I own one petticoat. Ever. I had, because I had one white skirt suit that wasn't white. It's an outside petticoat. Yeah. That's all it really is. I think that's a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone from my generation. <laughs> but yes, the lace is just gorgeous, gorgeous. on it. It's absolutely And it's amazing. just going to, I've, I've chosen a sort of a, lot, a stable but lightweight fabric. Yeah. Because... You know, I want to be able to sit on it, and I don't want to have to iron it, so it's already wrinkled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I bought my husband a pair of pants in this fabric. Okay. Yeah. So, this is what I'm hoping to finish off this afternoon. And what I did was I really didn't want to waste my stabilizer. So, and I'll of course do this in the class, but just in case anybody is doing up. Um, things over Christmas I needed the stability of the hoop I didn't want to baste it in because even that wasn't giving it enough stability so what I did I had my double layer of wash away and I had two pieces the same width as the hoop of um, the embroiderer's felt and then I just with wash away thread sewed them together and I laid it so that up until here, you had your um, your embroiderer's felt, and then on in the stitching area only did you have the wash away, and that meant that I actually didn't waste any of the wash away. wasting stuff like yeah you know yeah I say I'll keep it but then it ends up just you know sitting in a drawer for 20 years okay so what's everybody else working on how are our plans going for Christmas ladies Eduardo finishes work this week, so my life ends. <laughs> well, we're going out to our farm for Christmas brunch. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. We're still hoping to get to dance. Um, normally today I would be presenting this from um, from up at Dad's because um, it's the it would have been my mum's birthday yeah. so normally we would be like my sister dad and i and very good friends of ours it would be um going out for dinner for, for mum's birthday but um I, I feel really bad actually they because they all chose to put it off because i'm not well enough to go up there um which is absolutely beautiful um yeah. but when my sister and i were talking this morning we're um you know, we were saying, oh, you know, I miss the fact that she used to guilt us into um, into making her a um, 
a coffee cake. Oh. Um, had to be a German, well, uh, had to be a sponge. Cake, coffee cake, yes. Sponge cake decorated with coffee cream, and it had to be very specifically decorated as well, the way her mother did it. Um, and then, um, and then the other one that she guilt us into doing um, was chocolate biscuit cake with Kofa. And, um, I thought I said to my sister, I'm thinking that might be one of my contributions for um, for Christmas Day. I'll do chocolate biscuit, chocolate biscuit. Um, and I'm taking. So pen. you're going to be up there for Christmas. I'm hoping yes. Where um, I had, well, <laughs> when I say I had Dad's present delivered, I really didn't. Um, I had I purchased. Um, because Dad needs an outdoor setting for selling his place. Yes. We need to get the outdoor looking as good as the indoor. So I went on Facebook, Marketplace, and found a really nice outdoor setting. I paid for it. Um, and then I called Dad and told him to go and pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, and then can you take it with him to his new place? Yes, and, and that's why I, I got the one that I did. Okay, so Michelle's thinking about Christmas next week. Um, Michelle's hosting, so eight extra people. Wow. Okay, Bronwyn, I am using um, poly mesh stabilizer. And it is, so it's going to stay in there. Um, and you should be able to purchase it from... Um, from your local place um, and it's strong enough but it's also soft which is what I love about it yeah I've been surprised with it I think I've used it in more products you know? um, now all of the things that I haven't got done so far I do have the T-pins in stock but they have not um, but they're not on the website. The other thing that came in is this. Now, this is a little silicon pouch. And it's got a sticky side. And if I pop that there, I can then put in there. my packet of needles. Oh, okay. So my needles are always there. It's got some oomph to it, like you can pull that forward. Oops. Damn it. Helps if you show it properly, Julie. Um, I've got them in different colours, and this is another one that I've got to get up on the website. Um, but, and Quite honestly, I will probably put it on the side of the machine there. Um, but just for that, you know, for that USB stick that you want to hold, that you want to hold, yeah. for that whatever, this is just a cool little pouch. Mm. And I can't quite remember, but I think it'll be about $5. I was very excited though. I sat there and did my diary this week for shows next year. Um, oh, good. The Canberra show is in a different place, which will affect you, Ms. Louise. Oh, where is it now? Well, and because of, well, it's now at Epic, which is a better place, but it's at a different time of year because of Canberra Cricket's, because they're doing their entire. Do you know? Nope. June, I think. Oh, right. Oops, today's okay. Yes, it's with um, your people. Yes. That's right. Okay, I just want to get rid of that. But that's a better time of the year. Yes. So that'll compete, that'll compete with the Sydney show. No. Oh, I don't know. Who Sydney goes with? Uh, I can't. I have. I haven't put those dates on there. Actually, that will. That will affect some of my plans. 
but generally oops, they're not at the same time. No, because Epic, I'm, I'm thinking, um, do they coordinate um, the two different people who do the shows? <laughs> no, they never do that though. Okay. Canberra's third, fourth and fifth of June. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, I, all I know is that they're at Epic. Oh, okay. So, as opposed to Thoroughbred Park. Okay, so you might have noticed that I have started um, advertising next year's block of the month. Um, I'm liking the little in between block for it, just giving it a bit of a, a respite sort of between and I'm hoping to get the rest of it up this weekend. Um, the other classes that I have planned so far and if you've got something specific that you would like to learn let me know. Um, so we've got the jacket that I'm working on with the eye of the tiger. Um, I've got, somebody asked for this one, vinyl record placemats and cassette placemats. I think mainly because there's a lot of people my age who are, um, who are you know, turning 50, etc. And um, the records or cassettes make good um, um, party favour sort of things. Mm -hmm. So that's just some of the classes that we're looking at. Um, I'm looking at doing some mylar. Um, Ah, we got some bag classes that I'm ready to put up. Um, so we're going to try and do a bag of the month. And the first bag of the month that we're going to start with is going to be this messenger bag. And it is one of those bags that when you once you've made it, you will use it all the time. It is such an easy to use and create bag. So I'll start getting February classes up soon. And for anybody in Adelaide, this week I will have the class schedule for AMQF where you can come to our stand and do a class in continuous quilting with your embroidery machine and the joy of doing it on our stand is that you don't have to pay that $65 joining fee to get into the AMQF classes. Um, this is just something that you can come along for the day, shop and participate in. Oh, I should show you the new fabric that I bought for those classes too. When I was down in Melbourne last time, Lynn Dixon and I went um, went shopping and we got some great, um, a bolt of beautiful Aboriginal print fabric. It's going to make some lovely cushions. Oh, Very nice. Sweet. 
looks very nice. It's coming up nicely, isn't it? Yeah, so it's only got one piece of fabric. Uh, so it's only got the one piece of fabric, yes. And then because we are so, because this one is just so quick, I think we might do the second block as well, as, as in the alternate block for this. And both of these blocks really are quite quick. And the other block's just a single block? The other block's a single block. And did you all see how stunning was Hay Hall's um, quilt? Here we go. How stunning is that? Like, mm -hmm. look at those borders. Isn't that just beautiful? So she's used the same border as me. Yes. But in those tones of blues and teals. Mm. Just beautiful. Mm. And Kay, thank you so much for sharing with us. Mm. And look, nothing's about finishing. It's all about participating to me. Yeah. Even if you haven't finished, show us what you've got. Yeah. Because, you know, your sewing will inspire somebody else. Oh, that's right. I just enjoyed watching. I sat there for about five minutes looking at it. Yeah. Looking at all the different things. So what generally happens, like, and once again, I've now got two of the Rocket Casbah quilts. Yes. Um, so what I will probably do is I will do it again a smaller size. Yes. Um, and then, so for instance, this quilt in a smaller size will become the display quilt for travelling next year. Right. The larger size of the Rocket Casbah will be a display quilt for travelling until then the next year when it gets recycled. <laughs> yeah. There's so much effort goes into making them, it's a, it's a shame. There's oh. a lot of people in the um, camp of quilters, I say, what are you, you going to do with the quilt? They say, we just fold them up and put them in the cupboard. And I think, oh. Waste. Okay, so our stitching is now done, and or our decorative stitching is now done, and we're going to go back to threading with our wash away thread.
remove the hoop from the machine and I'm going to take my wadding and lay it over that outline. Now my wadding is precision cut here for the right amount of space. If it wasn't I would do colourway 9 and then trim away the excess and then do colourway 10. Because it is precision placed I'm just going to place the backing on that and you can tape it if you wish. I can feel whether or not I've gone too far out with that and you can also see on the outline there whether I've gone too far out and then I'm going to skip down to colourway 10. And what this does is this now gives you that accurate outline for when you are going to trim your block. is my quilting. Nice kind of grey colour isn't it? Yeah. It goes well with that with your background fabric. Oh look I'm so happy that I've had enough colour like an, I've gone through a second spool of thread but I had the exact same colour so I've had enough to get me through everything without having to do a colour change between any other blocks. Mm. And I haven't run out of fabric and that was all leftovers as well. Yeah. Oh, Mary McNabb saying lovely. Thank you very much, Mary. I appreciate that. that and that's just going to take two minutes new hour new item and of course then as soon as I've done my eye drops I get my hand sanitizer and use it. Ooh. It's that zen of stitching. Now if any of you are um, still trying to help a partner or loved one find you the perfect gift, one of my favourite gifts um, that I've had Edward give me over the years is an additional hoop. If you've got one hoop that you use a lot more than any other, um, it's a great way of being able to hoop up project number two while project number one is stitching. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like what I've done here. I have used, um, I've already hooped my second hoop, but I've done it with my slightly larger hoop, but it's just going to sort of squeeze in. And 
man, look at that. All done. So now I can delete that block. And when I say I've got a second hoop, I've got my 140 hoop here that is all ready to rock and roll. And then I'm just going to load my design. And just like that, we're on the last block. Anybody watch the Sex in the City reboot? I haven't bothered. I liked the original, most of it. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not, it doesn't yeah. do anything for me. Once you've watched it once. So this is block 30. The block that I'm doing here is, oh, just scored four extra hoops from Marketplace. That's a brilliant idea. I hadn't even thought about checking on Marketplace for extra hoops. That is a good idea. So what we've got here, and I'm just going to see if I can bring up that original block as well. I'm so going on to Marketplace in a minute. Um... Not oh, the artwork, Julie, the finished block, you fool. Okay. So, this was my finished block. Um, now, colour-wise, I'm just trying to think. And I'm almost thinking I might do lemon, pink, green and orange. So they're the scraps you start with and that's all you've got left over. Yeah. And that's not, that's really good isn't it? Yeah. Oops. Looks like you tell the machine to go back to the is having a bugger of a day. Probably means my needle's on the out. How many hours would it have stitched? I would hate to even think. Yeah. And they're stitching a lot faster than that. That's what I thought I'd do after when I come back from New Christmas, after Christmas is put new needles in everything. Yep. Oil everything. Yes. Special needles one, two and three. <laughs> Isn't it funny how on the multi needle you use some some needles just more than others? Yes. 
Yes, yeah, five and six, you probably wouldn't probably be putting your needles in. Um, when I was helping Lynn set hers up the other day, and I always, when I had my 10 needle, I would always set it as colourway 10, or the one that was most difficult to get to, um, had black on it. And I just left that as black. Oh, okay. Um, if there's colours that you use a lot, put them in the out of the way ones that are harder to get to. Ooh. Okay, that's not looking good. Yeah. Let's see why it's not looking good because that is stuck in there. That's better. But when you have six, you tend to swap them around a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I know what I know now, I would have got 10. Oh, isn't it amazing how much better things are when they're well? One thing I did do while I was feeling only slightly crappy, um, I went through all, I pulled out all of my fat quarters mm -hmm. and I organised them into planes, patterns, novelty and Christmas. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Because um, I was hunting around and I folded them all up into like the same sizes so that they can sit there nicely as well. Do you have little boxes that you put them into? Uh, yeah, that massive black one over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> little boxes, girls. It's not what you'd call no. little boxes. A couple of little later. So in my son's room at the moment is the girl who doesn't talk. Oh, okay. Um, so she's been here since Sunday afternoon. She's um, not talking to her parents. I should have to talk to me for me to work that out. They were always going to do some sort of a movie marathon thing. Um, but Boyo has been recommended by phone this morning because um, he didn't do his chores yesterday. I don't care if he's got a friend over but he can still do his damn chores. Um, and I can see we've got Christine Martin from New Zealand. Thank you for joining us Christine. Um, Mary McNabs from Ohio in the USA. Thank you for joining us. Sandra Webb but I cannot see Vasef Tech. I'm not sure where that is, my darling, um, but welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, now, I've got to do a quick check.
Doesn't help if you look at videos. I think it's one of those things that you probably get a, um, you know, it's snap them up when you see them, which is fantastic. How much do our thoughts go out to those people in Kentucky? Oh, how beautiful was it though? I saw a picture and it was, it was horrifying that this entire route had been taken off a church. But if you look at the pews, every Bible was still sitting in the pew. Oh wow! And I thought that was just gorgeous. I loved the imagery of that. Oh, right. Did you see our church we vandalized last week? St. Thomas? No. At Charnel? No. Yes. The altar was, was turned over, the lectern was turned over, the Our Lady was broken. No way! Yeah, down at St. Thomas at Charnel. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, so it was all fixed up by Sunday. So, yeah. Some little vandal came through. I thought it was so sweet talking to Dad this week and he's telling me, you know, telling me how his lips go and, um, and he's there, you know, and I don't even have to go to a deacon's meeting this week. And I said, oh, why? Did they cancel it? He said, no, I resigned from being a deacon. And that's always something that he's been proud to serve doing. And yeah. so I, oh, okay, how come? Um, and um, he made the decision that there were probably men of a younger age who could utilise the opportunity to bring newer thoughts and ideas into the leadership team. And I thought, that's, that's kind of classy. Good on you, Dad. Yeah. I'm, yeah, really proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Who's how old is Dad? 76. Yeah. Um... There's time for younger people to stay yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes if you leave the older folks there, then younger people don't feel they need to do anything. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, new ideas. You know, yeah. one, once upon a time he was the young boy. Yeah. Um, yeah we keep time. on telling him that was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, you're very polite. <laughs> Oh, come off it. The man's part of a young 20s, um, yes, Red Cross man. young 20s, you know. Even their children, even their grandchildren are barely young 20s. <laughs> Some of their grandchildren. Yeah. So how are you coping with all the people? Look, they, you know, they just do their own thing. So, yeah. I mean, last week I was not fit to be anywhere. Like, I'm... I spent the week, I'd sit in the office for an hour and then I'd go to bed for another three hours or like I, I just, I was in so much pain and just not feeling good. Um, but um, 
the girls are going to help me this week. Um, we're going to do one room at each day. Oh, well, that's a good idea. And, you know, just spend a 20 minute blitz. Yeah. See what you can clean up for me. Yeah. And the three of you. Exactly. So you're going to direct the Oh, and I'll do it as well. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we'll drive up to Dad's and we'll do with a three hour piece. <laughs> yes, I hope our cleaning lady gets her act together. Has that been since COVID or? Mm. Yeah, because I can't do any sewing because I've for everything. Oh, it's doing the whole and the patch stitching. Yeah. And, free. and that's it. The, the over stitching just really adds a oh, yeah. of texture to it. And that's the modern um, applique. Yeah. Because I remember when we did applique years ago, we just did the edging. Yeah. And that was it. We thought we were very clever then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we never thought to do yeah. anything extra on the inside. All we did was just cross stitching. Yeah. evening I'm going to show you exactly how I come through and put the borders on and um, and finish this little dial up. Oh okay. And remember if you can't watch you can always watch it on catch up it's all yes, good. I can watch it on catch up. Oh, I got a gorgeous pair of shoes for the wedding reception we've got to go to on Boxing Day. <gasps> um, Zieras, which are the orthotic ones. Okay. Um, and instead of, because I was looking at them and they were $240, I think, to $2240. And I'm not against paying that for, for a new pair of shoes, but I know I'm not going to wear them a, a hell of a lot. Um, you know, compared to say my everyday shoes. Mm. For some reason, I looked on eBay and I got a brand new inbox, Ziera, the style that I wanted, 75 bucks. Wow. Never, never worn or put pieces in there and everything. Um, and then I was saying this to Grace and I, just as I was talking, I said, we should look there for your giant ass Hobbit feet. Um, because her feet. You know going to fit. It's a little bit of a gamble. Like the Zieras, I know what size I am now. Oh, so, right. Not an issue. Um, with Grace, it was a gamble. But we saw a pair of sneakers, leather, for if she does classes that require leather. Or if she gets a part time job and she needs a good leather shoe wide enough to put her um, hobbit ass foot in. Twenty-two dollars new oh, inbox. That's worth a gamble. What size shoe does she take? She only takes like an eight, eight and a half, but her foot's so wide that sometimes they've got to put her in a nine to get the width. Oh, so nice. here I could get the extra wide fit and 
it's not going to be stuck in up her feet because they're you know because they're all they've got the support in them. Mm. Yeah, it's being in the environment. Um, and yeah, they're um, they're nurse sh- like they're the ones that they recommend nurses get. Oh, okay. Um, well, she doesn't mind. She wouldn't mind that. No, and you know it's just for wearing to school with a pair of jeans with a you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, you want something comfy to wear to school. And what colour? Just white. Just black. Oh, okay. Um, black leather. Boring as that shit, but it's just perfect for it. Yeah. Um. Yes, it's when you've got really wide feet or really narrow feet, you can have lots of problems. So now after being sick, it would now cause you to not getting any of my birds back. So that's handy as well. Um, <laughs> and look, I was frustrated with him because I'd sent him an idea on something that I wanted. And he just has no sense of planning. So he did spend time last Sunday, but I don't know what to get you. I said, well, you can always look at the links, Daddy. Um, and... Um, so yes, he's been off doing some internet shopping this week. And then he comes in, oh, I don't know whether to get you this one or this one, because this one's cheaper, but you kind of, you know, it feels wrong to get you the cheaper one, but you kind of don't need the more expensive one. Mm, that's fine. Um, and while I was there, I saw one that I like. Okay, we'll buy that as well. And Merry Christmas. Um, so he bought his own present as well. <laughs> Oh, well, when I travel, I ruin about one mouse a year from winding it up and putting it in my suitcase. Oh, right. Um, so I really needed a new mouse. And normally I just use whatever old caster he's got. So I just suggested that he go through and get me a new one. Years old, <laughs> so I, so there's no you can't buy the new cord anymore. <laughs> yeah, so it works beautifully. Okay. And Sam said, "Look after the cord, Louise, because you're not getting another one." No, <clears throat> it's already a second one. Here, will he work from home more often? Um, he's trying to do three days from home, two days in the office. Oh, okay. How that goes next year? Wait and see. Yeah. Rosalind Preston, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Reynolds has offered me the mouse that's running around her land room. Oh, oh right. that's so sweet. No, thank you. I just got rid of my own. Yes, we do have mouse problems here in Fraser from time to time. Winter, we had it. We seemed to... Yes. I yeah, think yeah. I knocked off an entire family. 
Um, but we haven't had any in week. Yeah, weeks, months. I had something rattling in the roof last night. Okay. I don't know what it was. I just told it politely to go away. <laughs> I think it was Mr. Possum. Oh, we have an ad here. For those of you, um, has anybody sent me Optus ad? With the possums. Or sugar gliders or whatever they are. And they're... Oh, in the trees. In and the trees. A baby, and there's a family coming a new baby. Yes. So it's a the, lovely little lad, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure, in, sure what they're trying to tell me, though. Is safe sex for possums. Um, don't let the possums chew up your bandwidth. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I haven't looked at it and wondered what it was all about, but I just thought, oh well. Yes, possums in a tree watching a new baby come home from the hospital. And then it's... Um, uh, and then the possums make their baby yeah, beds. After watching YouTube videos on how to... Make a bed. Yeah. So I'm, I'm worried about pervert possums looking at you. I'm worried about um, the sex lives of said possums, and then what? Um, and then it's yes. Them using them using my internet. Yes. Yeah. I, I haven't. I, <laughs> I'm glad you're 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 wondering. I kept on thinking. Well, it must be an ad that young people understand because I totally don't understand. <laughs> I thought my old brain doesn't understand that one. I need to put this out because I've put it in a safe place at my house. Ah. I searched everything three times and I can't find it. Well, that's okay. My builder wants you out of your house anyway. He'll find it. I know. <laughs> they need a house. Yeah. <laughs> I said to my garden lady this morning, I said this garden is too much effort. Okay, so now we are up to the second last colour. And this is going to be the corner pieces. So I am popping. So has this got two fabrics in it or one? Two. Hope Springs Eternal. Mm -hmm. Hope Springs Eternal. I keep on trying even though I'm doing it myself. So, first thing that we get is the outline showing us where to put the fabric. Ho oh, ho. Love it when a plan comes together. And don't forget, we want to leave that little bit of extra fabric to go into the scene. Yes. I learned that the first couple of times. <laughs> it's so easy to forget. Yep. And what I mean by that is that's as much trimming around this part as I'm going to do. I'm going to need another pair of these. No, I'll get you a fresh pair. What colour do you want? I don't care, as long as the scissors work, I don't care. <laughs> I'm past that stage. Oh, I'm just putting those there just to remind you. To remind you, cool.
loving all these scrappy bits that I've been able to use up there. It is good, isn't it? Just the little tiny bits of fabric. Yes, you'd normally throw those little tiny bits out. decorative applique stitch notice that it is still 99% of the time satin that covers up all of those um, all of that joint so this is a bubble satin stitch bubble satin stitch so it's little bubbles oh I like that one Gail McNair's joining us from Tucson Arizona thank you for joining us oh nice I have to wonder what time of the night it is there, or morning. Now, while that's doing that, what I am going to do is come through and show you, because I know we've got some new people, and we've had a beautiful surge in our classes and our engagement over the last couple of weeks. So thank you to all of our new viewers who are joining us. So once I've got my finished block, I can come through and I want to get rid of the excess cutaway. So just coming between there. So that's my block and then I'm going to come through and I want to take the bulk so we want we want to leave the bulk on the back but then I just want to trim each block so that it's a nice quarter inch And there is a YouTube video of me showing you how to do the joining of the blocks. Okay, so that stitching is now covered and our final colour is going to be the pop of orange. Then we do the quilting. One step ahead of yourself, Louise. Yep.
just a little pop of colour to finish it off. Mm. I'm liking how that's going. Mm. That's a difference from any other block. Mm. Done a quarter of an inch cut all around. So, what I've then got, that's me while I come back. Something I'm going to miss. Sorry, guys. Joy of being at the end of your thread. Okay, so what I've done Hold on What I've done is I've just lost my camera So what we've got here is the block and I've trimmed it to a quarter inch Now what you can see here is that there are actually two different lines this was the original stitching line and it's been ever so slightly sucked in because of our stitching the line that we trim to is the outer line and because both of these are done with wash away thread once I've put it all together I'm gonna to come through and I bought a two dollar spray bottle from the reject shop and I'm going to start spraying my seams and getting rid of that. But I use them to join everything together first. So when do you, when do you spray? Before, now? Do you spray? No, no, you don't spray until um, everything's together. The whole quilt's together. Yes. And then you use a mix of spray and um, like you can dab. Just be very careful on the big one of the original Rocket Case Bar. One of my fabrics, the dye ran because I over dabbed. Mm. So, um, you know, I would use a cotton pad, like a cotton tip sort of a thing. I should have washed that I should have washed that colour before I start. So you put in those colour wash colour blocks, yes. Yeah, just automatically. Yeah. So when you wash this quilt, you would I washed my fabrics, I learnt from my mistakes. But even now you would still in case of rain again. No, yeah. once I've run once I've washed my fabrics I'm pretty comfy. Like I washed it, I think I chucked a handful of salt in stay the colour. Um, but if it worries you, yeah, throw a colour patch in. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I just wouldn't bother because I've already washed mine once. Okay. But I also get the better safe than sorry. Yeah, anything's better safe than sorry. And I'll prep backing fabric. That's, oh so nice, isn't it? <laughs> That's been one of the smartest things that I've done. Having the blocks of, of the, um, the wadding, the fabric and that already cut. That I didn't do that when I started the quilt. But, so I've only done that for the last three or four months to make sure I had enough fabric. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's one of the smartest things that I've done and I'd certainly use that again.
but I would still recommend to people like me still have more left over for the mistakes you make along the way. <laughs> people like you who know what they're doing is fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but still have experience. You'd never make a mistake. Oh, some of the blocks I've done three or four times, Julie. <laughs> when I'm not being happy with the tension or not being happy with the um, problems I've chosen. Yep, Michelle's saying she pre-cut all of her fabrics and embroider as well. And it does just make getting yeah. into stitch that much easier. Oh, yes. I'm off to steal, um, when I'm up at Dad's, I meant to steal them last time, more of these containers that I've used to store the quilting for the, for the year. Um, so that I had all my threads together, so that I had... Um, so I'm off to steal another couple of those from Mum's stash. No, okay. I've, got it, I've got it in a basket. So I've got my wash away thread and I've got my wadding and of course we're going to skip colourway 23. Oh, you've got a different backing again this time. Because I'm using stuff up. I'm going to have it be interested to see the back of this quilt. <laughs> I have not purchased any fabric or Girls, thread. You should see the back of this quilt. It's got <laughs> all different pieces on it. If I thought better, I would have deliberately done that to um, to have it more decorative on the back. Yeah, you only think of these things afterwards sometimes, yeah. don't you? And you can see there, just look at how much that has sucked in. Oh, wow. Which is why we do this. Yes. And then our final colour is the quilting. Excuse me. the decorative quilting on our block. There won't be very much room for decorative quilting in this one. No, I'm trying to remember which decorative quilting we use on it. So, the other thing that I did want to show off there mm -hmm. And look, I'm only up to test sewing it, but how gorgeous is my tiger? And what I've done is I've used a really open stitching, but then I've made sure that each colour goes in different angles so that you're still getting texture. When it comes to the black though, I really wanted that to pop, so I've done it in a nice luscious thick satin. So I cannot wait to test stitch that guy out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not bad actually, only eight colours. Oh, that's okay. So loving how he's looking. I think I've actually got a red denim jacket and I might try it on. Oh. oh, 
I would love from anyone and I see we have lost a lot of people because they've gone to do whatever they need to do because this is a longer class today getting both blocks done um, for anybody who's finished or created a project this year with that we've done I'd love to see some pictures please please share them with us it would just be lovely And that is our last block there as it finishes off the quilting. So, thank you so much for joining me today and for joining me this year. Um, you guys really have been my salvation um, as I've been locked down and doing all the different stuff. Um, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you guys coming through and playing threads with me each week. Until next time, 